So that's coal, good old number 22, bottle calf no longer. Now just another calf on the ranch. We will come back down here in about 24 hours and check on him and see how he's doing. And we'll keep an eye on him throughout the week. <laughs> oh, man, a bug just flew in my mouth. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. My name is Mike, and thanks for joining us once again. If this is your first time here, I'd like you to watch a few minutes and then decide if you'd like to subscribe to our channel. If you hit that little subscribe button and uh, click the bell so you get notifications every time a new video comes out, about once per week, and then on Sundays we have another video come out. That is our weekly vlog. <laughs> you can get signed up for those and come along with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Hey, buddy. <laughs> this is Cole. Cole is our bottle calf this year, and today is a big day for Cole because today is the day that he gets to go back out with the cows. First, we're gonna give you a little bit of his backstory, then we're gonna load him up in a trailer, and we're gonna take him about five miles back into summer pasture where he can learn how to be, well, a bovine, cow. Would you quit headbutting me? You turd. Hi. Hi. So this is Cole. Cole was born back on April 14th. His mom we knew as mastitis cow and she wasn't able to feed him as he was getting older. So actually on the day that he was born we made the decision to bring him up here with us and become his only family. Oh, jeez, Louise, you're a giant turd. You're a giant turd. From that day forward, we took, a, we took care of Cole every single day of his life up until this point. Started out on six bottles a day. Now we've got him down to no bottles per day. He now eats grass, where of course he didn't in the beginning. And although he weighed 70 pounds when he was born, he's now pushing 400 pounds. And it's time for him, well, it's time for him to grow up. Up until now, he's hung out with the dog and the kids and everybody else, us included, and really has never hung out with another cow. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna put him in a trailer. Uh, we're gonna take him back to summer pasture and drop him off with the cows and let him see what it's like, well, to be what he's supposed to be. We're also gonna give him about 24 hours. We're gonna check on him and see how he's doing in that time. So I think we've pretty much gotten the backstory of Cole and how Cole came to be here on the ranch hand, how he became our pet cow, our bottle calf. And now it's time to get him moved. Move it, Cole. Come on, move it, bud. Come on, come on. Oh. No, wrong way. Unless you want to walk all the way down there. Let's go. Oh yeah, there we go. Smarter than you are. Maybe. Where are you going? Hey, no, that's... Where are you going? Let's go. Come on. No, not in the garage. Almost there, buddy. Limo awaits. Come on. Come on. There you go. Good 
job. Good boy. Come on, big boy time. Come on. Okay. Up we go. Go and get in that trailer. There you go. Good. Oh. All right, there we have it. Oh, Cole is now loaded up and ready to go down to the cows. So our friend Cole has a little bit of a drive as we uh, as we head back down to the cows. Like I said, about uh, five, six miles away, somewhere in there, down at summer pasture, kind of depending on on where they're at. And I really don't know where they're at until we get down there every single day. They they have about 2,300 acres in which to to roam around. So they do tend to to move from one side of it to the next. But we're going to do our very best to try to drop him off, um, kind of out in the middle of the cows and that way they know he's there and hopefully they'll kind of take care of him even though his mom isn't out here anymore um, we actually ended up getting rid of her uh, this summer after we took him away from her and because she had mastitis obviously um, you know she wasn't able to take care of him and there's really it was her second year of having having calves with the mastitis issue so um, it was just better off to to kind of get her out we were hoping that we'd be able to treat her with antibiotics but it it just didn't happen so as we head back here um it kind of gives me a chance to uh to talk a little bit about bottle calves and and really um they're useless they're, they're, no they're not useless um they're they're a lot of work i'll tell you that anybody who's raised a calf um, and, and these cows out here will tell you, it's a lot of work. They're, by the time when we bring cows back and we sort cows off and we preg check and do all that, which is coming up here next month, uh, I think the cows are, are almost relieved at that point. They're like, woo, don't have to deal with it anymore. And honestly, we kind of feel the same way. We don't have to uh, make bottles for, for coal every single day now. Um, but I can tell you that without bottle calves, we wouldn't be able to do um, a lot of what we do. So one thing that, uh, that we learned um, with bottle cows is that we do have to take them down and get them reacclimated to the cows. We did have one bottle calf that we had years ago. His name was Snowball. And uh, Snowball ended up um, staying with us all the way through until it was time to put calves on the, on the truck to take them to auction. And when they took him to auction, he was, he, was, he was way too tame, and they actually thought he was blind. Um, he wasn't, but they thought he was, and uh, he didn't bring anything at auction. So pretty much all that money we put into him, um, which with bottle calves, there is a lot of input. There's, uh, there's just the, the milk itself, the milk replacement that we feed them costs, um, you know, hundreds of dollars uh, to, by the time um, you end up feeding them for three months. Um, you've got medications involved, and of course you've got your time, so that, that really does make a difference. But um, we did figure out that because of snowball and that situation that happened, we said, okay, now how can we fix that? And that's a lot of what we do is just trial and error. So we knew um, that that cost, that mistake, which really wasn't a mistake, it was just the fact that we wanted to do the best for this calf, and we basically made it too tame, um, was a you know $800,000 mistake. Um, so we learned that what we have to do, there's some antelope, by the way, crossing in front of us. Antelope season's coming up here next month as well. So what we learned we had to do was actually take these calves back and put them in with the other cows and teach them how to be cows. Um, but even though we do that um, and today and the reason we're doing it today by the way is that today uh, was our last harvest host uh, to stay on the ranch up in throughout the entire summer uh, we're open to a program called harvest hosts uh, where you can sign up online and you get access to basically campgrounds all across the united states uh, campgrounds uh, farm stays golf courses, all kinds of places that, that people with RVs uh, can stay for free. And our, our ranch is one of them. And uh, you can stay here for free 
Um, all we do is ask that you shop the farm store while you're here. But one of the things that we've done um, over the last couple of years, uh, and this year especially, is we, we do a tour every single morning um, for those harvest host people. So when they come and stay with us, they get the tour in the morning and the tour always starts out with feeding coal. And basically the main reason behind that is because a lot of the people that are coming to us um, with Harvest Host, they're city slickers, they've never been on a farm or a ranch in their life. And it's kind of like throwing them in the deep end. And, and you know, it's um, as cruel as it may sound, it's almost like here, meet your food. Um, because this is what we do here and we're gonna get right to the meat and potatoes of it. So this is coal. To present ourselves as being honest and fair, but also showing that, you know, we take care of these animals uh, the very best that we can. And, and that's something that, that we pride ourselves on. We like to say that every animal on the ranch really only has one bad day. And that's either the day that they leave the ranch to go to processing or the day that they leave the ranch to go to the auction, which probably isn't that much fun either. But um, we definitely want to make sure that, that, we're, that we're honest with folks and, and that we're not sugarcoating it. So we start the every, every single tour with coal and we have uh, for quite a while. And that's something that I realized we learned when we came to the ranch that the first time I was ever really around a calf a lot or even around a cow a lot was a bottle cap. They give you a very unique opportunity to um, to get to know a cow. I know it sounds weird, but a bottle calf relies on you. You become its mom. And uh, over the years, we've had a, a number of bottle calves. Uh, we've lost bottle calves. We've, of course, gained bottle calves. And um, they definitely teach you something about the industry that we're in and something about yourself too because you you do learn that while this industry isn't the easiest and there are very hard aspects to it uh, that you learn about your own compassion and and how far you're willing to go um, to save or even make one single calves life better How do we end up with a bottle calf? Well, uh, there are multiple ways. Um, the most common way for us actually is when a cow has twins. Uh, a lot of times uh, black Angus cattle uh, just aren't able to take care of twins. And if they do have twins, sometimes we can take a cow that might have lost a calf and graft the other calf, the other set of, the other one of the set of twins onto that other mom. Sometimes it's all about timing though. And if we don't have one, that loses the calf about that same time frame, we usually end up with a bottle calf. So uh, that's the most common way that we end up with bottle calves is because of, uh, of twins. And we also have, like uh, Cole here, uh, mom has mastitis or mom is unable to feed a calf or unwilling to feed a calf, doesn't want to take care of a calf. Uh, then it falls to us, it becomes our responsibility. Um, the other way is that if we do lose a mom um, while she's giving birth to her calf or close to it, um, that's another way that we end up with bottle calves. So no matter how it happens, it's our responsibility and, and to be able to give that calf the best life that we can. And, uh, and that's definitely what we try to do. And like I said, our main goal here is to drop coal off here uh, amongst these cows. Not that anyone's gonna grab him and become a motherly substitute like we have been, but um, I think he will feel more comfortable once he figures out that he's supposed to be here with these guys. Cracker Jack coming over to see what's going on. Hey, buddy. We always call him the welcoming party. Anytime he sees a trailer coming, he'll come a-running. He, uh, he doesn't care who it is. It's, uh, it's going to be a part of his life. So we're going to park right here in the middle of this 80-acre hay field. Bunch of cows down here. There's Cole making a little bit of noise. Hey, buddy. You're being really loud in there. Oh, 
Okay, Cole. Jump on out. Let's go see your new friends. Look, you got kids to play with. Kids your own age. Other cows. How do you feel about it? What do you think, huh? We need some of this grass. Maybe I'll walk over here and check things out. So as you can see, Cole, obviously very friendly. His brand actually healing up pretty well. And he has been castrated, so he will fit in with all these other bulls down here, all these other steers. Hey, go see the new kid. Hey, come here, bud. Come here. It's okay. They're your friends. They are. They're gonna be your friends. At least for a little while, okay? So that's Cole, good old number 22. Bottle calf no longer. Now just another calf on the ranch. We will come back down here in about 24 hours and check on him and see how he's doing. And we'll keep an eye on him throughout the week. I'm kind of bug just flew in my mouth. If you do uh, follow our weekly vlog, that'll be coming out on Sunday. We're gonna continue to check on him throughout the week too on the weekly vlog. So make sure you follow along there. But in the meantime, we're gonna get out of here. Um, I hope he doesn't follow us because that would be super sad. But uh, we're gonna try to get out of here and then we'll be back down to check on him here tomorrow. Hey, number two. Hi. Hey. Hi. All right, let's sneak on out of here. So somebody's gonna say, oh, that's so sad, or that's why you shouldn't name your calves because you have to do things like this. And honestly, number, four, number one, he hasn't gone anywhere. He's just down here with the cows um, who are his people who he should be hanging out with anyway. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, the other factor is that, yeah, come October, uh, when it's time to sort off the calves and their moms and, and send calves to auction, he'll be, he'll be going with them. And there's, there's no denying that either and and this is part of the reason that we make the bottle calves part of our daily tour is that we want to show people that yeah while there is some uh, some some downside to it that um, there is a portion of uh, of the whole process that can be sad or anything else um, it's also it's also our lives and it's and it's what we have to do so the number of bottle calves that we've had on the ranch has been astounding i mean i remember our very first bottle calf i think we named him norman because that was the name of the cow in city slickers if you remember that movie uh we named him norman and and uh, he was our very first bottle calf and that was our very first lesson in getting attached to something that eventually you're just gonna have to have to let go and that's something that we tried to even teach our kids i mean if you've seen some of our videos our kids um, stand there as we load pigs onto the trailer and thank them for their bacon and while we don't you know ev we would never process a cow like bambi or blonde cow or or cracker jack or somebody like that um, you know there is there is a reality to to the ranch and and what has to be done and and uh you know my while you know bambi will never become hamburger um i can tell you i won't let her suffer either so there's definitely a uh, a give and take that you that you have to deal with and and you know for some for some people having having cows is is like having dogs and that's fine too you just have to know um you know where that where you draw that line and and where you know how important are they to your family they're not they're not pets um but some of them are it's it's uh it's it's just like coal it's uh it's a catch-22 Hey, buddy. Hi, Cole. How are you? 
Where are you going? Hey, how are you, buddy? How are you doing down here? You doing okay? You think, oh, hi. Hi, hi, hi. You still have stinky breath. You doing okay, bud? Hanging out down here with your friends? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Buddy, hey. Hey, where are you going? You're just running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Hey, come here. Hi. Well, Cole's down here. He seems relatively happy. He's got an itch right now, but uh, he seems pretty happy. And I want to thank you for coming along with us today as we, well, and yesterday, as we got Cole moved down here with the cows and eventually, hi. He'll get used to it. He may not be completely used to it yet, but he's getting there. So, Cole, you got to stay, buddy. I know. I think he wants to go home with us. Okay, we'll see you later, Cole. Okay, so maybe that's a, a little sad he is following us. But you know what, he's, he's got to learn that uh, this is where he belongs. These are his people, so it is what it is, and he'll figure it out. So thank you guys for coming along with us. I appreciate it. Uh, be sure to subscribe, follow along as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary new video due out Sunday morning. And we'll come back down and we'll check on Cole and see how he's doing by the weekend and hopefully he'll be a little bit more well-adjusted. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.